Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to create realistic wood textures inside of Photoshop with only filters. So let's get started. Both of these are seamless textures so you can create a pattern out of them and use them on larger canvases as well. I'll show you how that works here in a minute but first of all let's go ahead and get started with this one. We're going to create a new file. And this file is going to be 512 pixels by 512 pixels. Resolution 72 is fine. RGB 8-bit. Background white is fine. Click Create. Okay, and we're going to choose our colors here. So the, the uh, background color is going to be 471C08. Click OK. And our foreground color is going to be... 712D0C. Click OK. Next, we're going to come up to Filter, Render, Clouds. And we're going to need something a little bit stronger than this. So we're going to co come back up to Filter and we're going to render again. This time, we're going to render Difference Clouds. Now we're going to go back up to Filter and then use that same Difference Clouds. You can do this as many times as you need. Uh, to get a stronger effect but what I'm looking for is something like this so you have a little bit more distinction in here. I'm going to do that a couple more times. So I, I'm just looking for a little bit more veining. This looks almost like a weathered leather look. So once you're happy with what you've got here uh, we're going to go back up to filter. Uh, this time we're going to distort and we're going to click on shear. Okay, now I've created this before, but when you create it, you're going to have a straight line here. And all you have to do uh, to create these little anchors right here is just grab any part of the line and then start moving it around. So you can, what we're trying to do is create like an S shape uh, and you can move it uh, as needed. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it as I had it. You bring that in just a little bit. Click OK. Okay, so now that we've got this shape here, we're going to add a new layer. Okay, with this new layer selected, we're going to come up to Filter, Render, Fibers. And we're going to set our variance to 20. And our strength is going to be set at 10. If you don't like the way it looks here on the screen, you can kind of uh, get, just by clicking this Randomize, get a different layout. So uh, that's fine for me. I'm going to click OK. We're going to change the layer mode here to overlay. And we're going to rotate this. So we're going to go to edit, transform, and we're going to rotate it to 90 degrees. And there you've got your very first wood texture. Now this one is a little bit more subtle than the first one I created. So if you go, if we come back here, you can kind of see that this is a lot more pronounced or this, this motion here. So you can work with that uh, when you go into shear, uh, into getting um, something that's a lot more pronounced or you can go with something a little more subtle like we did here. That's uh, really up to you. Either way, they're uh, very realistic looking, beautiful textures. Okay, our next texture is going to be the lighter colored wood, a like a birch wood texture. We're going to go up to File, New. And we're going to make the dimensions for this one a 640 pixels wide by 128 pixels height and resolution 72, RGB, 8-bit. Background color is white. Click Create. Make sure that your foreground and background color are set to default. Uh, if they're not, you can click on this little icon right here and that'll set that uh, back to default black and white. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Once you have this set up, make sure to turn off that little lock icon. So this is just a regular layer. It's not a background layer anymore. So we're going to come up here to Image, Canvas Size. And we're going to stretch this bottom section to 640. So we're going to have a square image. So we have width of 640, height of 640. Click OK. 
Now press the letter V on your keyboard to get those anchors up. And we're going to stretch this layer vertically on the canvas. We're just going to go straight up and down. This is going to look like what you would achieve uh, if you had used the fibers, but for some reason um, it just doesn't work the same when we use fibers. So that's why we're just stretching the cloud uh, render here. So once you have this, uh, we're going to go back up into filter and we're going to go to blur, motion blur, and we need the angle to be 90 degrees. It's straight up and down vertical. And we're going to take the distance on this pretty high up. 375 is good. Click OK. Now we're going to take this layer and we're going to offset it. So filter, other, offset. Now we need to go half of 640, which is going to be 320. So we're going to go 320 for our horizontal and uh, 320 for our vertical. Make sure to set that to wrap around. Click OK. Now you're going to have something that looks like this and it's going to have this seam here. So we're going to have to get rid of that. So we'll come over to the smudge tool and this brush size is OK. We're at 175 pixels. You can make it smaller. Strength we have it at 26 percent and I'm using a very soft brush. So make sure that it's just a default uh, soft round brush. And then just come in and smudge that up. Okay, once we have that set, we're going to come up to image and we're going to do an adjustment and posterize this layer. And then we'll bring that layer up to about um, 30%. This is going to give us that wood grain or the beginning of that wood grain effect. Click OK. Now we're going to come up to filter it one more time. And this time we're going to go to stylize and we're going to find edges. This is going to give us a black and white or a more distinct line here. And you'll notice that we have this color uh, areas. We don't want that in this design. So we're going to come back up to image here. We're going to go to adjustments and we're going to desaturate the image just to get rid of that. We want it to be black and white. And we also want these lines to be a little bit more defined. So we're going to come into the levels and we're going to make some changes there as well. So we'll go to command L or control L to bring up your levels. And what we're going to do is take this dark one and bring it all the way to the edge of where those white bars begin. That's going to be about 215 for the black. Click OK. Now we're going to add some noise. We'll go back up to filters noise, add noise, and we'll add about 50% noise. Distribution Gaussian monochromatic is checked off. Click OK. Now we're going to duplicate this layer. Right click, duplicate layer, and we're going to call that layer one. This one will be layer two. OK, we're going to start with number one here, and we're going to uh, go back up to filters and do an offset. So filter, other, Offset, and this will be a, a horizontal 320, vertical 320, wrap around, click OK. OK, now we're going to add a motion blur, so we'll go back into filters, blur, motion blur. And the distance on this one is going to be about 10 pixels, and we're keeping that angle at 90 degrees, click OK. Now we're going to select layer number two, and we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it opposite. So we're going to do the motion blur first and then we're going to offset it. So we're going to come in here to filters, blur, motion blur, the same settings, angle 90 degrees distance, 10 pixels. Click OK. Now we're going to go back in to filter, other, offset, and we're adding an offset of 320 horizontal and 320 pixels vertical. Wrap around, click OK. I'm going to move this to the top. So you'll see that we have this crease here now. So we're going to go ahead and add a mask to get rid of that. So we're going to, with this number two selected, we're going to add a mask, press the brush, or the letter B, I'm sorry, on your keyboard to bring up the brush. Make sure that it's a soft brush. So I'm using this 
uh, one of the default brushes, soft round brush, normal mode at full opacity. Uh, and then I'm going to just come over and remove that line. Okay, now I'm going to grab both layers, hold down the shift key and then grab the other layer, control and E on the keyboard to merge them. So once we have the one layer, we're going to go ahead and right click and duplicate that layer again. This is going to be layer one now. So we have layer one and two on this layer one, the top layer. We're going to rotate that to 180 degrees. So we're going to come up to edit, transform, and then rotate 180. Okay, we're going to go ahead and desaturate this top layer a little bit. We're just going to remove some of this white. So you'll go to command L, control L on the PC to get your levels. And we're going to bring our white output down to about 120. Click OK. And we're going to come up to the filters and sharpen that up a little bit. So filters, sharpen, and sharpen, just to give us a little bit more definition on that layer. Okay, now we're going to work with this second layer. We're going to turn this top one off so we can see what we're doing. And it looks identical to what the other one looked like before. So what we want to do, what we're basically doing is the opposite on each one of these layers. So this one, uh, we're going to invert the color. So Command and I, or Control and the letter I. And now we're going to play with the levels on this one as well. So we're going to go to Command L. And this time, instead of working with the white, we're going to work with the blacks here. So we're going to make our blacks about 50 here. And our output level for black on this one is going to be about 120. And this is going to give us another gray scale. So click OK. And we're going to sharpen this one up as well. So we'll go back up to filters, sharpen and sharpen to give us a little bit more definition on those. Okay, so now we can turn this one back on and we're gonna grab both of them. So I'm gonna shift and then grab that top one and we're gonna change the layer mode for these both to overlay. So we're gonna have two overlay layers. Uh, this top one, we're going to change the opacity to 75% and the bottom one will change to 30%. And this is gonna allow us to have any color that we want underneath this these two layers. So. I'm going to bring up uh, a solid color layer and my color for this is going to be E6CC9E. It's going to be just like a pastel yellow color. Click OK and I'm going to bring that underneath these two layers. Now you'll see right here where we have a um, very distinct white and dark. This is where you can play with your opacity uh, if it's just too much. So I, for me, I feel like this uh, white is very strong. So I'm going to bring that down. We'll bring down our opacity to about 20%. And then you can do the same thing with the uh, top layer. The top layer is going to control the darks. The bottom layer controls the lights. And then you can just uh, play with opacity to get what you're looking for. So if you want a lighter, smoother look, you'll bring down that opacity. And if you want a stronger look, then you can bring it up. So I'm going to leave ours at 75%. And now you've got a birch wood finish. And you can also uh, turn this into a pattern. So we'll go to edit. And we're going to define pattern here. And we'll just call this light wood. Click OK. And now we're going to uh, open a new document. But we're going to bring up the uh, size of this document considerably 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Uh, and then just click Create. It's just for exam. I'm just trying to give you an example here of how you can use this. So we're going to come down here and we're going to add a pattern. And it's going to naturally pick up that last pattern that we used. So again, we made this at 640 pixels. So it's a it was a 640 pixel by 640 pixel uh, square image. We're now working in a 3000 pixel by 3000 pixel document. And you can bring this up a little bit and you can see how much uh, bigger this document is, but you can still use that same pattern just by bringing up the scale uh, and then you can the same thing uh, it can be done with the other with this pattern of this one 
does have somewhat of a seam on it, but again, we're working with a pattern that we created, a 500 by 500 pixel pattern uh, that we created. We're now in a 3000 pixel document and we can bring this up to uh, right around there. And you can see it's, a, it's in a very large document, but you're getting the same quality and the same image in there. For those of you on my email list, you guys know I always try to send you something extra every time we do a tutorial like this. So for this week, I'm sending you guys this wood themed typography template and it's super easy to use. All you have to do is come up to the text layer up here, press the letter T on your keyboard, make sure this is selected and then just highlight all of that and type in your own text and that's it. That's all it takes. So it's super easy to use. You can use any words that you want and you'll get this beautiful wood themed typography that you can use for any of your projects. So if you're on my email list, look out for that this week as well. So that was a light and a dark wood seamless patterns inside of Photoshop using just filters. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got a lot of value out of it. If you did, please make sure to like this video, share the video, subscribe to this channel, and of course go over to prettywebs.com to pick up tons of resources, both free and premium for your next design project. Until next time, thanks for watching.